the relationship governing and defining electrical resistance is Ohm's law. And the relation for what we call an ohmic material, so that not all materials behave this way, but a very important class of materials do, and that is that they have a constant electrical resistance. Some materials have an electrical resistance that depends on other quantities, such as the amount of charge flowing through them, magnetic fields, things like that. But for ohmic materials, the resistance is fairly constant. The relationship is this way. The current flowing through a component is equal to the voltage across the component divided by the resistance of the component. The unit of resistance then is what it has to be. As I mentioned before, it's volts per ampere. That's an important enough unit that it has its own name, the ohm. The symbol for ohm is the capital Greek letter omega. For obvious reasons, omega kind of sounds like the beginning of ohm. I like to express Ohm's law in the way that I did, I equals V over R, because it gets cause and effect right. That V, the potential drop, the voltage, is the cause of the current. The current is the effect. So I equals V over R. And then R is something that hinders the current, that makes the effect of the voltage less. We can rearrange Ohm's law. There's only three factors in Ohm's law. I equals V over R is the way that I like to remember it. If you solve for R, R equals V over I, or the way that it's often expressed because this doesn't have any fraction bars in it, V equals I times R. Voltage is current times resistance. I'm going to give you a practice problem. I want you, to, when you get the problem, to stop, work the problem, and then start the video up again. A one and a half volt battery powers a light bulb, and the light bulb has a resistance of nine ohms. What's the current through the bulb? Well, how would you answer this? Well, you'd use Ohm's law, I equals V over R, and in fact, that's already solved the way you want it. You want to get I out of this, so you just have to take the voltage divided by the resistance. Do you know the voltage? Yes, you do, 1.5 volts. Do you know the resistance? Yes, you do, it's nine ohms. So what's 1.5 volts divided by nine ohms? One sixth. So one-sixth of an ampere. Here's another practice problem for you. We have a car headlight drawing a current of 15 amperes when it's connected to a 12-volt car battery. What must be the resistance of the headlight? I want you to stop the video, solve this problem yourself, and then come back to the video. What do you see when you get this? Well, you have to use I equals V over R again, but now you're going to solve for R. So that's R equals V over I. V is 12 volts, I is 15 amperes, so 12 divided by 15 is 0 0.8, or 4 fifths. So it's 4 fifths of an ohm in the, uh, as the resistance of the headlight. Now I have another question for you. Um, again, I'd like you to stop the video to work the problem and then come back to it. So here the question is, a car headlight has a current of 15 amperes through it, and it's connected to a 12 volt car battery. So the voltage across the headlight is 12 volts. The current through it is 15 amperes. We're asking what's the resistance of the headlight? The rearrangement of Ohm's law that tells us resistance equals voltage divided by current. In this case, voltage is 12 volts, and the current is 15 amperes. What do we have from that? Well, 12 out of 15, uh, that's got a common factor of 3. So that's 4 times 3 divided by 5 times 3, so it's 4 over 5. And a volt per amp is an ohm. So 4 fifths of an ohm, that's 0 0.8 ohms. Along with this, we can come up with a formula for electric power. Here's how that works. Voltage is the work done per unit charge. So number of joules per coulomb. The current is coulombs per second. It's charge that goes through some surface per time. So if you want to know how much work is being done per time, well, if you have the work per charge and the charge per time, you can just multiply those together. Voltage times current, we have the charge part canceling out because we have charge in the denominator in voltage and it's in the numerator in current so the charge part just cancels out and we have energy per time or work per time which is the power. 
So electrical power is voltage times current. And that's the power dissipated as heat in a resistor. So now we can ask this question, practice once again, um, stop the video and answer the question yourself. Uh, what is the power dissipated by the car headlight that draws 15 amperes when connected to a 12 volt car battery? So we've already done this uh, part of this problem. You've already figured out what the resistance is. You've already been given the current and the voltage. You've been asked to find the resistance first. Now you're asked to find the power. Go ahead and do it and then start the video up when you've got your answer. So once again, power, oh, come on, really? So again, we have power equals voltage times current, which in this case is 12 volts times 15 amperes, 12 times 15 is 180. And the unit is going to be watts, amps times volts equals watts. You can substitute Ohm's law into this power formula to find different ways of expressing the power. If you know, for instance, the current and the resistance and don't want to go through the trouble of figuring out the voltage, we can just uh, select for that. So we substitute in the V equals IR. We want to get rid of the V part, so we'll just substitute in IR where V shows up. And so that gives us V equals I squared R. Similarly, if you know the voltage and the resistance and don't really care about the current, uh, you can solve Ohm's law for current, I equals V over R and just substitute that in. So it's going to be V times V over R, which is V squared over R. So for the formulas, it's a useful exercise to verify for the car headlight. Uh, remember, we already know what the answer is supposed to be for the car headlight. We have 180 watts um, being dissipated by the headlight. So given that the current was 15 amps, the voltage was 12 volts, and then we use that information to find out the resistance is 0.8 or 4 fifths ohm. Verify that the VI works. You can, we already did that. Um, 12 times 15 is 180. I squared R. Well, now we have 15 squared times 0.8, and you can verify that the units work out. Once again, gives us 180 watts. Or you can look at V squared over R. So V is 12 volts, that's 144 volts squared, divided by R, R is 0.8 or 4 fifths, so dividing by R is multiplying by 5 fourths, which is 1.25. So 144 times 1.25 better give us 180 watts, and you can check that indeed it does.